What is this book that you've got? So it's called Wild Foods. It's a <clears throat> it's a pretty old book, actually. 1970 what? 1978. Uh -huh. But this is what we're going to be looking for today, which is growing in your backyard. Excellent. So much of it. So much. So the thing I really like about this is that there's identifying pictures as well. This is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Nice. And this is what we're going to be making. We're making pie. We're making pie. We're making pie. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue. This is Mike. I'm Mike and this is Sue. And we are going to make pie. We've got basket. Have you a knife, my friend? I have a knife. This knife is actually not that sharp. It's the curvature of the blade that lends itself to good foraging. Oh. Um, it's called a bill hook blade. Um, the knife itself is called a karambit. Um, but a bill hook is perfect for getting those really clean cuts. Um, and especially for mushrooms so that they can regenerate from the spot that you cut them from. And we're on it. With May comes fledging season and we have all these tiny baby birds. When I tell you it's fledging season, what I mean is that this is the time of year when hatchlings have gotten feathered out in their nests and they're learning to fly. Sometimes you'll see them down on the ground like this. They're taking a breather. Thankfully, they're pretty well camouflaged. White one's song, right? Yep. Okay. That's Bitsy and Betsy. And there's yep. this cream and cookie. Very good. Ooh, Let's check in with our rust now. What's going on with it? We've got another cap growing. Oh, hey. We are going out into the backpack because we're using an ingredient um, that we're gonna forage. Japanese knotweed. Knotweed is a very noxious and invasive weed. Um, it has been choking out plenty of things in Massachusetts for a while now. You can see what's going on here. We have been reclaiming this space from the knotweed for about two and a half years now and it's still coming up in places right we planted all of this out last year with rye not rye grass but actual rye um, so we're gonna just keep mowing down that and the knotweed as it comes up that method has given us this space which has far fewer knotweed and they'll all get mowed down and pulled as the season progresses little by little Back here is more well developed. Well developed, like we want to use it, or no? Like no. Okay. Um, I'll check on the other side, but things things through here are pretty. Good. We're late in the season for it. Yeah. I'm looking more for um, things that are just starting to bud. I would still consider this a shoot and usable, because there really aren't many well developed leaves, mm. um, and secondly, you still see this bunch of very um, lightly colored leaves coming up at the top here that are still unfurling uh, and you can see on the sides it's still got offshoot buds um, now over here let's take a look at this one while you do have that uh, bloom up top you see all of these well-developed uh, leaves and these nodes that are starting here now have their own fully developed leaves no this is longer um, the leaves aren't really completely grown out yet we had trouble last year with those with peeling them right i forgot yeah. about that so we are looking for thicker ones i'll put a link in the description to uh the video that mike and i did last year of pickling knotweed um and you can you can see we've learned a couple of things since then you know it's i can see why somebody would have brought this over it's actually quite pretty it is unfortunately yeah here we can point out another not just okay. edible right here oh this is garlic mustard it is and my chickens love it and i like it a little bit too i don't know how you have it but i normally um will just take this and treat it like broccoli rob when yep. they're young um it's perfectly fine like that
Um, we'll see if we have enough to do two pies with the, I don't, don't know if you have that pear that you said you might have. I do have pears in the cool. basement. Well, um, if there's not enough rhubar uh, rhubarb, there's not <laughs> enough knotweed, then we can supplement it with pears. How about that? I like that. That sounds great. Cool. What pray tell us this? This is an amber jelly or a brown witch's butter. It is a jelly fungus. As you can tell, it's very squishy. It's all water. Um, but this is this would be another, like, you can add this to soup. Um, I wouldn't eat them raw, so toss them into boiling water if you're going to do that first. You see this this uh, black edge here? Uh -huh. it means that they're starting to go past their prime. Oh, rats. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, that This kind of crispy edge, they should be all completely plump, and they should be um, um, firm, um, but because it's got a little bit of crispiness, it is no longer a choice. We're just peeling the outer cuticle off of this. Very sour. Mm. Lemony. It's a little beet green thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pleasant. Interesting. Yeah, I guess I get what you mean by that, like earthiness. Mm. Tastes of dirt. It does taste a little bit of dirt, but not in a bad way. No, it it's like, like dirt and if apples didn't really have taste. Hmm. Yeah, a bit like a Granny Smith. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like the sour well, tang of a Granny Smith. Yeah. It, it, that is. That just, is the tanginess. Just less substantial. Yeah. It's a little bit astringent. These are crisp. They're nice, like a cucumber kind of crisp. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. And not fibrous at all, like you'd think it, they, you'd think they are just by looking at them. Yeah, because we take the fibers off the outside, mm -hmm. right? Yep. We're gonna make some pies. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. So we've got enough for one and a half pies. Or thereabouts. Okay, so we have five mm -hmm. cups. So I will need three cups to supplement it. So we're gonna do one that's just straight knotweed, and then we're gonna do one that's knotweed and pears. Right, quarter, quarter, cup. quarter cup of flour, uh, one and a half cups sugar, three eggs. It's got a birthmark. It's called belly button. <laughs> it's an alley. <laughs> oh, that's a huge yolk. Oh, Song out did herself with that one. That's a beautiful egg. The nutmeg, it does call for three quarters of a teaspoon. If you ask me, mm -hmm. you should measure nutmeg with your heart. Fucking love the smell of nutmeg. It's so good. All this is going in here. So this is pie number one, and this is going to be all not weed all the time. All and not weed, indeed. I like the fact that we're using a recipe that's almost fifty years old. It's kind of neat. That is cool. Six, seven. Maybe we had less than we thought. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Should we just make one pie? I guess maybe we should just make one pie. No reason you can't quick pickle those though. Mm. I wonder if this will come out like a custard. I kind of hope so. I like custard pies. Mm. but like sweet and creamy and tart and sounds great to me. Might be pretty awesome. Especially with that added nutmeg in there, I'm really curious as to how that's gonna transform it, you know? Good spread of knotweed out here. 
All even filling. Look at that, perfect. It looks really pretty. It's very green. It is really green. All right, let's grab some butter, toss it in there. Again, I, it doesn't say how much butter. Mm -hmm. This is definitely something that you do with your heart. Okay. Because your heart will certainly feel it later. Ah. <laughs> Whatever, we're here for a good time, not for a long time. That's why we're eating weeds. Okay, there's our 400. 400. All right, 50 minutes. We'll see you in a little. Oh, but. No, they're, they're in a Oh. There is so much happening here tonight, <laughs> um, but the pie is done. Hey, Raina. Hi. The pie is done. We've all had dinner. Mike has come back, and we're going to sample the pie and make sure that we've got a serving to go home with him for Aubrey. Um, we have been opening up the Richter's order, and there's all kinds of great things in here. There's some... Um, Siberian ginseng, there is May apple, there's this amazing smelling sweet grass, some lavender. This is called a fish mint and I fell in love with the picture and we got the fish mint. It is a, it t smells minty but it's a, hello. Hi. It's an unusual kind of mint. Here, smell this. Isn't that strange? It's like watery and a barely there kind of mint. Yeah, it's weird. It's actually a little fishy. It's Again. a little stinky. It smells like what dog? It does kind it of smell like, like Bailey. That's a little gross. Oh my like God, but minty. Oh, uh, I don't get minty. Oh, I got the Wet dog, mint. but fresh. Uh, <laughs> That's gross. Fresh, wet. Yeah. 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 All right, we'll just, we'll put it somewhere where we don't have to smell it. All right, we got, this is thick. Is it thick? I was so yeah. worried about it. It was so jiggly. Yeah. It was so jiggly. It's like cutting jello. It, it looks gooey. It looks like a quiche. Was this a custard pie? Yeah. Okay. So it is basically a quiche. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, that's what. <laughs> I prefer to be here for a long time. Thank you. That's really nice. It's a lot more mild than I expected. Like a little bit of tartness, and then it's like the the creaminess of the custard just kind of immediately counteracts it. It did make a custard, didn't it? Yeah. Mm hmm. I think more nutmeg next time. Mmm. Hmm. Right. Mmm. It's not bad. No. It's not bad. It's definitely it's like. It's interesting. Citrusy. It's a it's, it's a lemon. recipe from the, from 1978. So like we can definitely judge it up now that. But like you gotta follow the recipe first, you know. But like two things that definitely would have added. Number one, salt. Um, oh okay. Number two, uh, I think cinnamon. And more nutmeg. I think that would give a good counterbalance. This is very nearly a mock apple pie. Mm. Very nearly. It's incredibly rich. Oh, it's really rich. It's got three whole eggs in it. Mm. It lost that earthy quality. Yeah. Like it no longer tastes like taste dirt. Like mm. Yeah, definitely cinnamon and some nutmeg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's good. It's really not bad though. It's creamy. Yeah. Actually, like you this. know what it needs rather than cinnamon and nutmeg? What's up? Like raspberries. Mmm. Mmm. Like a raspberry compote to put on top? I would mix some raspberries in. Mm. If only they had the same season. Right. You know, because we were we were thinking about doing that with the uh, wild strawberries. Mm. Mm. So, success? Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. We shall forage again, my friend. Yes. Clean plate club for me. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today while we did, went lit up. Got the, the, Thank the, 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 you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. While well, we went all foragey to table on it, um, this is pretty good. Making pie from weeds. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll catch you up soon. Take care. Bye. Oh, bye. Sounds good. good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you, Minnesota.